I'm in Stikishulmu in West Iceland, on the north coast of the Snæfell Peninsula. Is this the most scenic town in Iceland? Well, on a sunny day like today, it's very hard to disagree. Welcome in Stikishulmu. Stigisholmo is known as the town of a thousand islands and it's not hard to understand why. It was first recorded in history as a trading port in 1596 when it was visited by merchants from Bremen. Over the years a little fishing village developed but it wasn't until the early 19th century that a proper harbour was constructed allowing the fishing industry here to really take off. And even today scallop fishing and processing is a major industry here but understandably during the summer months, tourism is now the main driving force of the economy here in Stikisholmur. It's definitely the most picturesque port on the dramatic Snæfell Peninsula, but in many people's eyes it's the prettiest village in the whole of Iceland. Now given the climate here, one's opinion on any destination in Iceland is always tempered by the weather conditions. But on a day like today, there's nowhere on earth I'd rather be. This huge chunk of basalt has been protecting the harbour for centuries and as long as you don't get blown away by the wind there are superlative views over the town itself and then all the way along the Snæfell Peninsula as well as out across the many hundreds of islands. It's a photographer's dream. The original church in Stikisholmur is exactly what you'd expect from a traditional fishing village. The new church, however, is like something from a different planet. In a country of modernist churches, this church, designed by John Haraldson and built in the 80s, is truly avant-garde. It seems out of all proportion to the size of the town, but it's also used for music concerts as well as religious services, and probably for welcoming visiting aliens too. I'm joking though, I think it's an incredible piece of architecture, both inside and out. I imagine that if Picasso had been transported to Iceland in winter and asked to design a church, then it would have probably looked something like this. Now believe it or not, this was the first two-storey residential house in the whole of Iceland. It was built by Arna Thorlasius. Now he was a man of commerce as well as a real scientific pioneer. Thorlasius built his house from the finest Norwegian timber, which is why today it's called the Norwegian House. Hi, my name is Hjördis and I'm the museum director of the Norwegian House that we are in now. Uh, the house was built in 1832 and it was important for Norway and now it serves as the regional museum for all of the Snæfellsins Peninsula. Uh, Árni Thorlasius and Anna, they had the house made uh, they lived here until around 1900. He was quite famous for his weather research and we were one of the oldest weather research station uh, in Europe. So he started that in 1845 and it has never stopped since. The municipalities in Snæfellsnes uh, area decided to buy the house from the co-op and uh, made it a museum. But that took like 20 years to rebuild it because it was not in a good shape. I also want to tell you that the, um, what we sell in the shop mostly uh, here is uh, local uh, artwork and some is just uh, like Icelandic design in generally but also we have local artwork. And what is the library of water which is also connected to the museum? That opened in 2007 and it's an art installation made by Ronnie Horn which is an uh, artist from the United States. There it has 24 glass columns and inside of each column is water from 24 glaciers of Iceland. And on the floor there's like words that all describe the weather. The view from here is astonishing today. Across the harbour, across the many islands of the Breidafjord, all the way to the West Fjords. I hear the wind is absolutely biting. Now 
Now, when I booked a room at the Hotel Franciscus, I honestly had no idea that this was not an ordinary hotel. As soon as you enter the lobby, you realise that there's something very different going on here. In 1935, the Catholic Order of St Francis arrived here in the village, and the nuns set about building a cloister and a hospital. Most of the original building has now been converted into a luxury hotel, and a much newer hospital, still bearing the name of St Francis, lies next door. It truly is a unique place to stay, as well as having incredible views out over the harbour and the fjord. As well as being a destination in its own right, Stiggis Holmore is also a transit point for the West Fjords. If you want to avoid a long, winding and very tiring drive to the West Fjords, then this is definitely the way to go. If you like to discover picture-perfect communities in wild landscapes, along with a dash of gourmet food, then this is definitely a place you should consider coming to. There are more films about Iceland, as well as the Faroe Islands and Greenland on the channel, so click subscribe and keep exploring.